Now the biggest misconception with waste spark systems is that they are actually bad, and it's it's really not the case. There is one downfall to it, and it's usually like in this case, the coil is split between two cylinders, which electricity takes the path of least resistance, making it uh, dry fire better on the dry cylinder than the wet one. Now we're going to explain all this later, but to explain waste spark systems, uh, let's take a peek underneath the valve cover. Now on this particular Mitsubishi 4G93, we have one, two, three, and four cylinders in order, and when we take a peek over at the coils on top, one and four are companion together and two and three. As well. So the coil for two and three is in the center, the coil for one and four is on the outsides. So when you fire them, they actually both fire simultaneously, it's just one is under power, the other one is not. So the idea here is we have to get rid of these and put individual coils on each one of them. Now this was never a factory option with the Mitsubishi, or at least this engine, or this family of engines. So we have to first get this valve cover off of here so we can modify it. Now it's really simple, just take it all apart. A couple smacks of the hammer gets the valve cover apart because these things tend to like to stick just a little bit. As soon as we have it off of here, we're going to cover up the old valve train, or at least everything in there, because we've got to make some dust. Now I'm going to take a marker here, and I'm just going to cleverly trace out the areas that I need to cut, give myself a visual reference. Now all of these brackets, except for the tabs where the wiring harness goes, need to disappear. And that's pretty much done by cutting them all off, nice and easy, just kind of take some time, point some attention to the areas that need to go away, and we'll just trim it all away. Pretty simple. Now notice the tabs still remain for the factory wiring harness, we want to keep those. The rest of it though, for the areas that were spot welded on, we can just get rid of those with a grinder. A nice little dressing up here. I like to pry away after grinding some of these spot welds, make it just a little bit less grinding. And we can focus directly in with the grinder. It keeps the waves off the valve cover if you focus in on the spots you need to. Next, a little bit of cleanup with the wire wheel on the grinder. This takes it down right quick and we're ready to get welding on it. Now each one of my coil standoffs is going to be made out of a shoulder bolt and uh, a couple spacers just to uh, line it all up and then we have the hardware to hold it all together. Now it, I'm going to cut the head of the shoulder bolt off of here, just super simple. We're going to slide the sleeve over it with the correct amount of adjustment and I'm going to weld these on. Sure that we have a nice good ground and we don't get any kind of moisture or anything i'm actually going to weld the top here as well of the uh, sleeve to the shoulder bolt next we're going to assemble it to the actual coil itself now let's kind of zoom in here and take a quick look there is a bit of a gap and i'm not going to fill that with weld and we do have to drop the coil down just a little bit to get it to seat properly so i'm just going to make a mark here we're going to slice this off so it runs parallel and mounts flat to the actual surface. And we'll just trim that off with the grinder. And we'll get to welding it on. Now, in order to not cook this, we're just going to drop a tack so it's in place, and then we'll go back after we remove the coil and fully weld it. Now one mild issue we have here is on cylinder number one, it actually interferes with our mounting tab for the wire harness. So even though this is going to drive my OCD absolutely bonkers and not look you know, quite factory, we're just going to clock it a little bit so we can clear our connector. And then we'll just weld that one on. Once all that's together, I'm going to stick it back in the car and let's get ready for wiring. I'm going to set all my coils in here. Get them nice and set and even. Now the thing is here, I want to make it look as OEM as possible. And wiring these up is actually going to be no different uh, in wiring itself compared to the factory car. Again, we're still running with the waste spark system. So in order to do this, we actually have to add two connectors. And I'm going to add them to the existing channels that are already there. So this one for cylinder number four needs to get extended all the way to cylinder number one. And I'm just going to do that by clipping off the connector itself and then splicing in an extension of the wiring harness and then we'll just add another connector to that end and run it down the same line as the factory wiring harness. Now before everybody gets on my case about not soldering, this is actually kind of a, one of those things, I mean, I've been building race cars forever and it's so rare that we solder anything because the actual uh, uh, fatigue of soldering uh, with the heat and everything else like that usually causes problems and vibration issues. So what we do is use uh, uh, butt connectors that are bare and then we heat shrink them so it also goes in for you know later corrections if you have to fix anything or anything else like that we just simply just cut them off and put a new one in 
So in order to make this run with the same uh, distance and everything else like that, to make this run with the factory harness, we're just going to tape it all together and then I'll go in and uh, work on channels two and three. Two and three were spliced together in new connectors and then they were uh, added into the original OEM ports or the original driver ports and we'll just stick these right out the middle just so it looks uh, exactly like OEM. Now again, same thing, solderless connectors, heat shrink, make sure it's all nice and clean and then we're going to tape all of it back together and reroute the harness, we'll put the original looms back on and we're good to go. Pretty easy. As soon as we get all that back together, we can give it a test fire before sending it off to coating. Now the other thing to remember about this, very very important, is that we did not delete the waste spark system. We are still using the waste spark system, which is fantastic, there's nothing wrong with it. All we really did was added one coil per cylinder. That means that 100% of the power is going into each cylinder. Even though they're still firing on a wasted spark system, they're still delivering 100% of the power to that cylinder, which gives you a lot of gains. You get a lot more stability in the higher end, you get a lot of better torque pull and all the rest of that stuff. Where originally we were working with one coil that serviced two cylinders and that made pretty much a weaker spark out of all of them. And this is, this is just one of those things that with a little bit of fabrication and ingenuity you can make it happen. It's really fantastic. It makes it super easy to, to, uh, to gain some power with. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments box below, and we'll definitely try and get back to you. I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the Fabrication Series YouTube channel. You can hit us up on Facebook.com slash The Fabricator Series, Instagram at Dove.Fabricator, or hit us up on the FabricationSeries.com website. Drop me an email, say hello, all the rest of that good stuff. Enjoy. We'll see you guys later.